All right, folks, uh, hopefully um, you can hear me. Uh, let's get started uh, since we give it to you know, give a couple minutes for people to join. Uh, again, my name is uh, Nico Kabar. I'm a solution architect at Tagera. And today we will be talking about designing your rancher cluster with Calico. Um, so with the beginning of this new year, hopefully you had a good break. Uh, so happy new year. Uh, if you haven't been um, or you haven't joined a Tagera webinar before, just a little um, uh, note about kind of the, the format. So it is a recorded webinar. So as long as, as sorry, as soon as uh, it will be done, uh, we will send out a, uh, um, a video um, of, of the webinar as well as the slides uh, that you'll be uh, seeing today. So uh, don't worry about, uh, you know, capturing uh, the screen uh, uh, screenshots or whatnot, because we will actually send those slides to you. Uh, we will spend 30, 40 minutes discussing the topic today, which is around, you know, design best practices uh, for running Calico with Ranchot. Um, I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. So feel free to uh, uh, chime in with the questions in the Q&A uh, uh, section or, or, or the chat window, other one would work. Um, it's difficult for me to see the, the questions right now, but uh, we'll dedicate some time towards the end of the discussion today to answer them. Um, so feel free to uh, note those questions in there and I'll be happy to answer them uh, there. Thank you, Shiz. So uh, with that being said, um, let's get uh, started. So um, uh, just a little bit uh, about myself today. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Nico Kabar. I'm a solution architect at Tigera. Uh, been with the company for a year now. And uh, prior to that, was with Docker and Cisco. So pretty much um, my whole uh, career has been around containers, um, uh, networking, cloud, and Kubernetes. So feel free to kind of reach out uh, to me if you have any questions. As I said, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, uh, later in the, you know, after we go through the slides, uh, I don't want to bore you too much with uh, with the slides today. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I would like to uh, make sure that uh, we cover some grounds around the topic today and uh, answer some questions that you may have around this specific topic or anything else around um, uh, uh, Calico. So um, uh, we'll, you know, I'd like to get started with a quick, in, you know, introduction or overview of Calico and Tagera. Um, and kind of dive uh, into um, you know why you should care why is it you know is it powerful to use Calico with your branch or cluster clusters some of the network design considerations as well as a deployment walkthrough and then as I said we'll have some time toward uh, that and to um, to answer some of your questions so um, just a quick uh, overview on Project Calico uh, Project Calico is a widely used uh, 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 you know, uh, um, uh, open source uh, project that started around the same time as um, as uh, Kubernetes, um, providing a secure um, uh, a CNI networking and security solutions to help basically network your pod uh, uh, traffic, ensure that your application um, uh, uh, services can communicate uh, across across the clusters. Um, and in also help with enforcing Kubernetes uh, network policies. Um, in terms of um, in terms of where you can run um, Calico, of course, pretty much anywhere you can run Kubernetes, whether it is a managed Kubernetes service like EKS, GKE, AKS, IKS, or of the you know the self-managed um, uh, on-prem or hybrid cloud solutions like OpenShift. And of course, Rancher, which will be the focus of our discussion today. So, regardless of where you run, um, uh, Calico, uh, uh, sorry, Kubernetes Calico can can be used to um, connect um, your pods and you know help with um, uh, basically be the CNI of the or the container network interface of your uh, of your cluster. But beyond that, actually, uh, Calico can be used to secure your uh, VMs. Uh, if you're not familiar, we have a, you know, Calico itself in open source can be deployed natively on uh, on Linux, and therefore um, you can run Calico on uh, VMs or bare metal uh, instances to uh, use the same uh, policy definition um, to secure workloads if they're running on 
Kubernetes or um, outside of Kubernetes. In terms of Tigera, we're the company behind uh, Project Calico. Uh, we, you know, we uh, maintain the project um, and we also help with and call out some of the STO security uh, working group and some of the um, uh, uh, integration that have been done between um, Calico or the uh, Kubernetes network policies as well as uh, STO. Um, we also have a, a solution uh, for the enterprise called Calico Enterprise, um, in which some of the you know Fortune 100, uh, Fortune 500 companies have adopted. You can see some of those names: uh, large financial uh, uh, companies, uh, automotive, uh, web, um, and um, and more have used Calico Enterprise today to secure their workloads um, and address some of the challenges that they've been seeing. Uh, when it comes to uh, adopting Kubernetes um, in, in larger enterprises. So um, in terms of uh, the Rancher and Together partnership, uh, we've been working uh, closely with uh, Rancher um, um, and we're, you know, we have a strong partnership uh, to help uh, Rancher users and customers um, and help them basically deliver kind of the best in class network security um, uh, solution. Uh, so uh, rest assured that you know if you go to the rancher site or or, or, or your rancher of reps or or, or support uh, if you're a customer of rancher or you work directly with Tiger, um, we have a strong uh, uh, partnership, and uh, you can see also in terms of the solution itself uh, how easy it is to utilize the power of Calico with Rancher. So we're kind of making the best in class for uh, the network security. Uh, with kind of the best in class in uh, Kubernetes management. Uh, this is what you get with uh, with using Calico with uh, Rancher. So um, just to kind of a, a you know background here, with, when it comes to Rancher options, when it comes to CNI options, if you go to the uh, site, you can see that there's they you know they support for um, for uh, uh, um, you know available options when it comes to CNI uh, when you launch a a, uh, a rancher cluster. Um, the default being Canal, which is basically Flannel um, for networking and Calico for policy. So you get kind of the best of the two words. But they also um, uh, support Weave um, and Calico. So um, uh, now if we, the focus of this discussion will be, of course, the, the, you know, uh, why Calico and what are the best practices around Calico. But this uh, simple uh, table that is actually available in the Rancher docs can help you understand at the high level uh, what are the key areas to look into and in deciding on the CNI. Uh, again, the default is going to get you uh, started. It's going to help you, uh, but it would be good to understand the benefits of each of those uh, CNIs and pick the one that is um, that addresses your requirements. Some of the areas that are critical for uh, for you to kind of look at in, as you're doing research um, and designing your your, uh, your cluster are the, the network model itself. Um, uh, you know, if it's providing a you know encapsulated or unencapsulated um, um, you know um, uh, networking um, um, design for your for your uh, network for your Kubernetes network, uh, if it applies network policies or it can enforce network policies. Um, how, you know, what it uses yeah. in terms of the, the data store to store all the information on all your networking. Also, um, it provides uh, encryption and of course, uh, how it, um, how it uh, uh, enforces the policies. Uh, at a glance, I'm not gonna go through the other um, CNIs, but at a glance, um, you know, Calico provides uh, both and uh, unencapsulated, more native, as well as encapsulated with VXN, IP, and IP. Uh, networking models. So depending on how and where you're running Rancher, you might need to uh, consider uh, those two options. Uh, if you're running on on-prem and you want to uh, incorporate your Kubernetes cluster and its networking stack with your existing underlay, uh, you can peer directly. Therefore, all the traffic that is um, routed or um, uh, yeah routed through the cluster uh, into your network is unencapsulated. Uh, IP addresses are uh, uh, basically routable within your, your, your underlay. Um, but if that is not the case and you want an encapsulated overlay, we provide two 
uh, options that are VXLAN and IP and IP. Uh, the other one is, uh, you know, Calco by default provides a uh, uh, network policies. Of course, it enforces network policies. Uh, Kubernetes itself does not enforce network policies. Um, you, you know, provides the API around defining network policies, and Calico is one of the options that you have uh, when you run Calico. You can actually use it not only for networking but also for policy enforcement. Uh, Calico also uses um, etcd. Uh, as a, a backend for um, uh, basically the data store uh, um, directly, or you can do it using the Kubernetes uh, basically data store API, uh, which makes it simpler to um, integrate Calico. Uh, actually, this is a um, misinformation here. Um, uh, I don't think it was updated in the branch um, docs, but um, as of Calico open source, I believe 316, uh, on the 315 or 316, uh, we have support for WireGuard-based encryption. Uh, so you have encryption uh, uh, out of the box. Uh, so you can turn it on uh, in your cluster and uh, um, Calico supports encrypting all the traffic in transit. And as we mentioned, um, there's uh, ingress and egress policy definition and enforcement that Calico can uh, uh, help you with. Now, when it comes to Calico itself, uh, you do have, you know, what's available in um, when you define the, the Rancher cluster in the cluster um, uh, YAML definition or config definition. Uh, when you specify Calico, you'll, uh, you'll end up running Calico open source. You can also run Calico Enterprise, which is basically from a functionality of the, of the CNI. It's pretty much the same, but we offer a long list of features and functionalities for the enterprise as a platform on top of that. So uh, we'll talk more about, you know, why we choose one or the other, uh, but just know that on, you know, for Calico, you have two options, Calico open source and Calico enterprise. So I know that we mentioned some of this in, you know, just right now, but in terms of why, um, why you should care around your CNI. Uh, first and foremost, um, the CNI is one of those areas where it's kind of difficult, not impossible, but it's very difficult to actually change or alter once you actually run workloads on your cluster. Um, and therefore, it is uh, extremely important to take your time to go through the proper design, gather requirements, understand, um, you know, the benefits of each of the CNI, how it integrates your, 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 um, with your infrastructure, with your network. If you're running on a cloud, uh, public cloud, how it integrates, uh, how it integrates with that, how it works with that, any any gotchas, any any specific benefits, because once you have a um, once you're launching customers, you have applications, it's going to be difficult to uh, one change the CNI altogether, or sometimes in some cases change certain um, um, configurations in the CNI. Not all of them, but there's a subset of configurations such as you know the the, the cluster cider, for example, with cluster IPs. Um, uh, for the pods or the services, that's going to be difficult to actually change once you have your your you're actually running applications on your cluster. Um, but um, in, in addition to that, uh, I'm going to go through a couple of key areas to consider as more, more uh, some of the benefits that uh, Calico can provide. Um, one being uh, Calico Cuddle. It's a simple, easy to use um, um, uh, tool, CLI tool. Uh, to manage and configure and view all the network related configuration. Actually, I believe by now we have it as a Kubelet uh, plugin. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it's it's similar to Kubelet, uh, but it's more, takes more of a uh, networking lens towards managing and, uh, uh, you know, uh, integrating with your uh, cluster, working with your cluster, getting the information configuration policies, um, but better suited for all things networking and network configuration for Kubernetes. The other one is around, as I said, the networking options. Um, again, there is a, um, you know, as you gather your key requirements when you want to deploy um, a rancher or as you're going through the, the, the design process, it's important to understand if you want to go with an overlay mode or a uh, non-encapsulated mode, basically ensuring that all the traffic that is routed, um, you know, uh, either within the cluster or any traffic leaving the cluster, will it be um, encapsulated or will it be uh, non-encapsulated? And as I mentioned, we have two options for encapsulation, VXN or IP and IP, and which one you decide between the two depends on certain requirements. Uh, for example, you know, if you're running on Azure, for example, or you want to run a rancher on Azure or running Kubernetes on Azure, um, Azure network itself does not support IP and IP. So basically you have 
uh, your only option there is using uh, VXLAN. Um, most of, I would say most of the deployment I have worked on for on-prem have opted to work with um, uh, non-encapsulated mode. Uh, therefore you have more uh, native um, uh, networking. Um, the, you know, the, the traffic is gonna be non-encapsulated. There's no additional, there's no additional um, overhead for encapsulation. Um, and you have a clear understanding of where the traffic is coming from or you know, going to because it's uh, literally just like any other traffic within your uh, network. Um, if you go with that option, there are a couple of peering options. Um, you can you know, peer directly into uh, your top of rack, for example. Uh, we have a capability called dual tour. So if you have a dual tour, if you have servers uh, VM connected to uh, dual tour, then you have a um, capability that uh, we support to provide that uh, high availability when it comes to connecting to two upstreams basically um, with ECMP. Um, we also have, if you have a larger cluster, you know, more than you know, 80 or 90 uh, nodes, uh, it would be better to do, uh, to peer with a dark reflector um, and not create a full mesh when it comes to, uh, you know, a full uh, BGP mesh uh, that would that way you have um, uh, you minimize all the chatter, all the all the updates uh, as pods come up or go down. So there's a you know more I would say more um, advanced configurations when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, you know peering and networking and integrating with your existing uh, cluster networking or your existing underlay networking. Uh, we talked about network policy enforcement. Um, you know, in addition to the Kubernetes network policies. Uh, Calico does support uh, uh, what was called Calico network policies, which is a superset of um, uh, of uh, Kubernetes network policies that add things like global um, network policies, uh, integration with Istio for layer three all the way to layer seven capabilities, uh, DNS policies um, among some of the kind of the key um, benefits of using Calico network policies. Of course, we support both uh, modes of uh, Coop proxy, IPVS, and IP tables, um, as well as we have uh, recently, um, I believe, also as you know, uh, with the three um, uh, three fifteen, these have went uh, GA um, with EVPF as a supported data plane. So if you're here, um, there's a lot of buzz around EVPF right now. It's a it's a uh, you know um, highly um, recommended for um, the, the kind of the advanced capabilities that it provides, as well as the benefits when it comes to um, efficiency um, and uh, observability uh, capabilities that it provides. So whether you're running, um, you know, on Linux, you have two options, IP tables uh, for data plane, as well as eBPF, if you are running a newer kernel, uh, as well as if you have any Windows um, uh, Kubernetes workloads or trying to get to uh, uh, adopt um, uh, Kubernetes for Windows, uh, we support um, uh, the you know the, the Windows platform and the Windows OS with uh, which with the host network with the Windows host networking uh, as a data plane. Uh, and I have to say the Calico is the only CNI out there that um, uh, you can use, especially with RanShift, to support both Windows as well as Linux. Uh, workloads uh, in the same cluster using the single CNI and using the single mechanism to define policies uh, all in one place. So those were kind of some of the areas that um, you know um, you know that are benefits or value added um, um, benefits that you get when you use uh, Calico uh, with with your venture uh, clusters. So um, let's kind of switch to the network considerations. And best practices, and uh, hopefully I can, you know, uh, you know, if you have any questions around those that I don't address over the next couple of slides, feel free to kind of chime in uh, with, uh, with uh, in chat. So, um, yeah, so you know, typically as you're designing your cluster, um, from a networking perspective, you're you're trying to make certain decisions around, you know, how do you choose a pod sizer? How big should it be? Um, will it be privately or externally deroutable? Those are some of the key, um, you know, questions that we hear, uh, and those are important because you need to kind of decide on those uh, before you launch the cluster. So uh, to answer some of those, you know, of course, um, uh, uh, you, you, 
actually st starting with the second one first. Um, so as I said, deciding on you know running um, Calico or Rancher with an overlay based networking model or um, a non-encapsulated native model is really critical because that would determine how you actually decide on uh, the pod side or the service side. So, you know, and the reason being is that if you have an overlay uh, based, you know, um, model, that means that you can pick and choose whatever side that you want. It can be as big as, you know, slash eight, giving you, um, you know, a large number of IPs um, because you don't have, those are, the, those are only locally insignificant to that cluster. But if it is non, it is a routable uh, native um, model, that means that you have to actually get uh, get that IP range from your networking team and have it be dedicated to this uh, uh, to this cluster. So how big it should it be? It, it, it depends on what you expect in terms of the number of pods that we launch. If you go with the the default, which I believe should still uh, recommend uh, no more than 110 pods per node, uh, therefore you have to kind of uh, assume that and then multiply it by the number of nodes. And then based on that, uh, select a side of that would encompass that. And of course, the growth that you expect to have in your cluster. And of course, you pick that side of specifically, um, you know, if it's if it's if it needs to be private or sorry, if it's an overlay, you can pick it no matter, you know, you can pick it that dot, a 10 dot and, and you can choose the exact side. Of, but if um, if not, you have to wait and, and get that actual uh, subnet assigned to you. From, from your networking team. Similarly, for the service side of, um, the only difference here is that the service side itself is not really uh, um, assigned or um, the responsibility of the CNI itself because it will be assigned and uh, managed through Kubernetes and Kube Proxy itself. Um, one clear benefit uh, or kind of something that's different uh, typically is that service siders can be reused over and over. Actually, both of them can be reused, but uh, they're, they're mostly locally significant to the cluster um, because they're, they're, you know, you would only want to reach a service uh, IP or VIP typically from um, from the from the uh, the cluster itself. We do have the capability actually for both pod and service side within Calico to actually if uh, to to um, P, uh, uh, advertise those within your within your network. So if you are, for example, if you're running a rancher cluster um, within your data center and you want to, uh, or in hybrid cloud, and you want to uh, assign IPs to pods and have it, have Calico um, uh, basically advertise uh, the service uh, IP. Therefore, uh, you're basically combining the power of the load balancing that comes with providing a VIP within the cluster and advertise that to, uh, to kind of the rest of your network um, that way, you know, if you have a, you know, if a DNS resolves to a VIP, um, Kubernetes takes care of uh, load balancing across the different pods. So that's also something that we've seen before. Um, so that is something also you can consider as part of the design process um, and, and, and approach that you take. But once you decide on the IP ranges for cluster side and the service side, um, you can configure those in the, in the, uh, uh, in the, YAML configs for um, for Rancher when you launch the cluster. So additional considerations are you know uh, the data plane to choose from. Um, as I said, the, you know the default is IP tables, given that it's been um, you know uh, it, you know it's it's part of Linux um, and it does not require newer um, it does not require newer kernels. But we've seen an uptake in uh, adoption of eBPF. And Calico is in full support of uh, of eBPF. Uh, we actually have highlighted a uh, handful of capabilities uh, and uh, put together um, some guides and 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 walkthroughs. And uh, we've seen the industry also go through some benchmark uh, testing um, uh, that uh, that are on our site, so you can take a look on the benefits of eBPF. So that's important to kind of look into and see if. Um, you will be uh, benefiting from EBPF, or, or you can just stick with um, uh, stick with uh, uh, IP tables based data data plane. 
uh, I think we talked about the second one, which is network encapsulation for you know um, overlays. Um, typically, if you're running Kubernetes, as I said, if you're running Kubernetes across uh, you know a single layer two domain, uh, so where the nodes, the Kubernetes nodes themselves are on a single layer two domain, uh, you do not need encapsulation. Um, and you, um, even if you don't want to advertise or integrate with your network, but if you are running, let's say on AWS and you have um, uh, nodes across multiple availability zones, then you do need encapsulation uh, to cross those layer two boundaries. Uh, so we do have also another kind of key um, um, uh, primitive here that's called the you know, IP pools. So uh, one benefit of using Calif is that it's it's not just a single you know whatever you, whatever you decide on um, as the main cluster cider that's not the only pool that you can use with uh, with uh, uh, Calico. Uh, we have a concept called IP pools in which you have of course the main uh, IP pool that is um, uh, genetic and uh, is for kind of all the cluster, but you can actually create um, slices of that uh, uh, IP cider, or even a total complete um, uh, cider to use, you know, uh, with with Calico and assign it for certain namespaces or certain uh, applications. Uh, an example of that would be, you know, for example, if you are doing, um, you know, if you're doing a native uh, uh, approach, uh, non-encapsulated networking model, and let's say you have um, you know, certain applications that are running, like let's say PCI applications running on dedicated nodes, and you want to uh, ensure that the traffic coming from those applications, those pods, is uh, allowed within your network uh, through firewalls and so forth. Um, so you can actually assign, create an IP pool uh, with a totally separate IP range and uh, tell Calico to assign all the pods from a specific namespace. Um, uh, or specific nodes based on node selectors to um, to that IP pool, and therefore the applications coming up and running uh, in that namespace or on those nodes uh, can use those dedicated sets of IPs, and the, the the traffic will be sourced from those IPs. So internally for your networking uh, uh, teams, they can actually you know create firewalls rules that uh, would you know would permit those uh, this traffic to be uh, allowed. So the concept of IP pools is, is, is unique to Calico, and you can actually manage those different pools uh, and understand, you know, uh, understand, you know, the, the, um, how many IPs uh, are available, how many are, are exhausted, and have a better sense of uh, how your networking um, uh, health is uh, using this, this concept. concept. Uh, the next uh, um, concept here is called IP block or IP pool block, which is, um, you know, it's basically how Calico assigns a node, a slice of uh, an IP pool, uh, so that all the pods in that on, running on that node would share that slice. And the main reason that's kind of somehow important is that um, if you are if you're uh, running in native mode or um, with IP and IP, BGP is running and BGP is used to advertise addresses or, uh, um, or prefixes in your network. And therefore, um, it's important that um, uh, you minimize the advertisement. So if you, that means that if you use um, all the pods in a specific node, use a single uh, slice of the pool, that means that you, you know, Calico can advertise only that uh, uh, prefix you know, whether it be slash 26, 27, uh, you name it. So uh, Calico uh, does this in a smart way where it initially assigns a slash 26 by default for every node in your cluster and only advertise that slash 26 to the rest of your cluster or the rest of your network. Um, so the, the block size is basically the, that, you know, the slash 26 that's configurable is how many, um, how many IPs is it dedicated when giving uh, to that each of the nodes in, in, in your cluster to minimize the network chatter or advertisement throughout your network. Finally, uh, there's a key consideration when it comes to netting. So, of course, if you're doing native um, uh, routing and no overlays, there's no need to net. You're basically, your, your traffic will be unnetted. It will leave the pod as it is, you know, as any other VM 
it will um, it will be routed um, uh, natively, uh, no no additional headers, and uh, therefore it will find you know for for egress traffic it will find uh, the next stop and it will be uh, routed accordingly. Um, then you don't need to not. But if you're using an overlay, whether it is uh, VXLAN or IPNIP, you have to sign on your NAT strategy. Will you NAT on the node? Uh, you'll be, you know, or you know, disable NATing, or you'll have a NAT gateway if you're running on AWS. So there's some key um, important questions to understand how your NAT strategy uh, needs to uh, to um, uh, be basically based on where you're running uh, Kubernetes and what configuration uh, or what you know basically the environment that you're running it in and how you'd like to NAT. Uh, it's going to be node-based NAT or uh, NAT gateway, or if you have, for example, a firewall um, or any NAT, basically um, uh, 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 firewall that is that is supposed to be doing all the NATing for your for your cluster. So those are some of the key areas that um, we typically kind of deal with when it comes to uh, working with uh, users of Calcul when they're running to um, use Calcul with with um, with branch. So uh, we'll spend, I'll spend, um, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so just going through, you know, uh, the Calc Enterprise capabilities on branch and why you should care. Um, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, there's three key areas where um, beyond what is available in open source, uh, Calc can help you, especially when you're running on, on branch. And they're mainly around security controls. This is how you can implement security controls, requirements for uh, compliance, um, if you have certain um, uh, reporting or auditing um, uh, requirements. This is where Calico Enterprise can help you with that. Uh, access controls. So if you you know need to find grain access to pods and services, um, this is where you can use things like what we call DNS policies and um, uh, other capabilities in Calico Enterprise to uh, create this fine grain access controls. Um, and uh, last but not least is uh, that visibility and troubleshooting. As you may be aware, you know, Kubernetes networking is not easy. And as you add more, um, uh, as you launch more applications, uh, especially microservices, there's more dependency on, on a robust network, but at the same time, without the right set of tools, you cannot know what's going on and where the, 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 the basically uh, the bottlenecks um, of, of uh, that are causing other you know, degraded application performance and so forth. So this is, um, uh, with, with Calc Enterprise, you have that capability, you have a way to understand what's going on, where, you know, uh, what is causing some of these issues. Um, and uh, those, you know, those three buckets, I would say are the key uh, reasons why uh, some of our customers are adopting Calc Enterprise. Uh, I'm gonna skip that, but if, you know, if I wanna leave with something is, is there's five key differentiators when it comes to Calc Enterprise, I want you to kind of understand uh, that go above and beyond what's available in open source uh, that can help with uh, with your adoption of Kubernetes. One is kind of the policy tiers. We'll take we'll take each one of those and uh, dissect them over the next couple of minutes. Uh, policy tiers, advanced rollouts, uh, full visualization, um, DNS policy, and pod level access and multi-cluster management. So uh, for the uh, policy tiers, um, you know with with Kubernetes network policies, you have a flat model. Uh, basically, you're either allowed to create a policy or not, and all policies are equal. So when, um, you know, in, in enterprises, typically you want to give your developers or application owners the capability to run and create their own policies that are more oriented to addressing the business logic of the application itself. But at the same time, you can't expect the, the application owner of one application to define policies that are required for you know for the cluster itself to ensure that the cluster is behaving correctly to make sure that the cluster is you know um, it's multi-tenant to make sure that the cluster is um, you know uh, you know is addressing the requirements of the security team the infosec team and so forth. So with tiers you have basically you assign teams the capability of adding policies and the policies in each tier um, you know the higher the tier is the more um, here on the left-hand side, so uh, the the um, they're, they're evaluated left to right, top to bottom. So there's more precedence and 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 importance to um, to how the policies are evaluated, and therefore um, this kind of establishes uh, a good 
balance between providing the power to individual developers to create their own policies and at the same time giving the power to the you know uh, platform teams or security teams to define cluster-wide policies that um, are important for the security posture of the cluster as a whole. Uh, the next one is that on advanced flow logs. So for every single transaction, every single network transaction uh, stream um, flow, basically of uh, of traffic, uh, whether it's east west between the pods themselves or north south, um, uh, we capture um, you know a long list, thirty eight uh, telemetry data points um, that include things like the source and destination name faces, source and destination pod names, labels. Uh, which policy allowed this traffic and, you know, amounts of bytes, uh, IP addresses, and so forth. So when you're going back in time to either understand an issue that was happening or you're troubleshooting something that's active, you have a lot more information with this advanced capability to understand um, more what is going on versus just purely an IP address or a port. So the, 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 this metadata can help identify which application you're talking about, uh, why is it causing this, and just get basically this historical data around, uh, around each flow line. Uh, the flow visualizer is another key capability. So uh, we use, this is one of the, you know, you can always look at the flow logs um, and see uh, the raw data yourself, but we also help with visualizing the, um, the, the, those flows uh, so you can, have each of the teams look at their namespace and everything is RBAC. They can see exactly what service they're talking to, which services. Um, you know, uh, if, if there's anything blocked, you can see any hotspots there. Um, you can see also um, recommendation engine. So you can, you know, each developer can actually go and see uh, for themselves uh, which services are unprotected and have Calco recommend a policy uh, to help with that, um, with that traffic. Uh, with securing the, the application. Uh, the other point here is on DNS policy or pod label uh, A uh, access. So um, when you have a, a pods running within uh, your cluster, uh, if they're trying to access external services, whether they're like public APIs or uh, other you know services like database services living outside of Kubernetes. Um, with Kubernetes network policies, you can use labels to um, to apply policies, but only if the labels apply within Kubernetes, only if those um, uh, endpoints are within Kubernetes. So with DNS policies, uh, we basically allow you to create policies and rules and policies that identify services living outside of Kubernetes using full DNS or domain names or subdomain names. Um, therefore, you can actually create a policy that has rules to allow or deny traffic based on uh, the domain uh, of the, 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 or the, you know, the domain uh, or the endpoints domain uh, instead of actual just pure Kubernetes labels. Uh, finally, uh, you know, Rancher is pretty uh, unique when it comes to uh, their multi-cluster management. They're pretty um, good at that functionality. And therefore, when you, when you, uh, uh, when you add that to Calc Enterprise um, uh, multi-cluster management, you have a unique solution. Um, so as you're adding more clusters to your environment, um, um, uh, Calico multi-cluster management can help with the centralized, basically, um, mechanism to have a single place for security controls, um, single, you know, single place to define policies and push and federate them uh, and have visibility um, into all the, all the transaction, all the flow logs across multiple clusters all from one place. So make it easier to manage, make it easier to uh, push in policies and create policies and push them and federate policies across multiple clusters. Uh, so that is uh, that's going to be helpful as you uh, scale your operations beyond you know a handful of, cl of clusters. So um, I don't think I have the full time to go through this, uh, but um, you know in in the slides that you'll get, you'll actually also get a GitHub repo I, you know, that goes through an example, a walkthrough of a, a deployment. Um, uh, for for uh, Rancher, and actually, along with that, you have the uh, as you can see here the cluster config uh, for open source based uh, Calico deployment with with uh, with uh, with Rancher, as well as a uh, um, Calico enterprise config. And the key, really, the key difference between the two, if you want to take it as a next step to kind of get your hands dirty, uh, the key difference between the two is really um, 
uh, uh, for um, Calico Enterprise. So for Calico uh, open source, you basically highlight Calico, let me see. Uh, you highlight, you highlight Calico as a plugin in your um, RPE config. And then basically that's all you have to care about. Rancher pulls the right Calico uh, bits and uses them in your in your cluster. Um, and if you're doing Calico Enterprise, really the only thing that is um, you need to worry about here is you actually launch it with nothing, with no um, with no uh, plugin, and you basically deploy um, Calico Enterprise based on our documented uh, method that we have in our docs. Um, but this this can the repo can help you with the sample config, and it will be sent uh, as part of the slides that will be sent to you. Um, uh, before I wrap up, basically, um, I wanted to kind of also mention that um, we have, you know, a handful of upcoming um, um, uh, events here and webinars, um, you know, uh, ranging from, you know, networking, security. Um, uh, I'm doing another event next week uh, for um, uh, a fireside chat around our uh, work with AWS Quick Start uh, for, for Calico. Uh, so uh, make sure to kind of look into the Tagera events site or look at the email that we sent you uh, because we put together those, um, um, you know, engaging interactive um, webinars and they'll be recorded as well. So watch out for those. Uh, 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 additionally, we have launched the Calico operator certification. I think uh, right now it's, it's live, so feel free, it's a free certification. Um, and as well as there's a free Kubernetes networking ebook that helps you with all things related to Kubernetes networking. Uh, those are free resources for you and uh, uh, can be great asset uh, and learning, uh, um, you know, resource for you uh, to learn more on network, Kubernetes networking and Kubernetes network security. So those two links also will be sent as part of the slides, one for the actual networking ebook and others for the Calico certification that's online and it's free. So feel free to, to, to um, attend those. Finally, um, before I, I answer the questions, if you wanna learn more about Calico Enterprise, uh, if you go to Tiger IOS trial, uh, you, you can get basically a sandbox environment for you to, to kind of get your, your hands uh, dirty with, uh, with the, the Calico Enterprise capabilities. And there's some cool labs that you can follow and learn along. With that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen uh, and I'm gonna look into the questions that were raised and uh, that way I can actually uh, answer them. So let's see for the Q&A part. Um, I am seeing, uh, okay. Yeah, so I've, all the questions in the Q&A are asking to share the slides and we will do that. So if you register, register for this event, uh, we will send an email with a video recording as well as the slide. So rest assured you'll get that um, you know, some sometime today. Um, in the chat window, um, uh, yeah, so I think there's that's pretty much it in terms of the, the questions. There's no technical questions I'm seeing, it's mostly uh, asking around, uh, um, there's mostly, mostly asking around the recording itself. Uh, so we will send those. Um, any questions around uh, Brancher with Calico or anything else around Calico itself? Any questions that you um, have or uh, have had in the past, even if it's not related to Brancher? Uh, okay, I'm seeing a question around, um, can you elaborate more on Calico and VMs, please? Absolutely. So um, when Calico, was launched, it was launched as a CNI for Kubernetes uh, uh, resources, right? Uh, to connect pods and for uh, enforcing Kubernetes network policies. However, uh, since then, there had been a demand to use Calico beyond pods to secure uh, workloads running on natively on VMs, on EC2 instances, natively on bare metal. So, um, we have a capability that's available in open source. It's called, uh, let me pull out uh, uh, the document for it so I can actually point to it. Um, uh, one second, please. 
Okay, so I'll reshare my screen here. So if you go to our docs, right, you can see here policy for hosts and you can protect hosts. Uh, so basically you can, uh, this is not specific to Calico Enterprise, by the way, you can do go to docs.projectcalico. Uh, uh, so this is the open source site. Uh, and if you can, you can look at uh, non-clustered host. So you can see here that you can run Calico as basically as a service, is a native service with system B or something like that. Uh, that can help with uh, protecting um, uh, the services that are running on that host. So think about this way. You can actually create a, um, you have certain VMs, you run Calico as a service, and you label uh, those nodes in, you know, you label those nodes um, uh, based, you know, similar to how you label pods um, with key value pairs. And therefore you identify that node as something that, um, is uh, relates to that uh, key, key value uh, pair. And then when you apply policies, uh, Calico will take into consideration as you're creating those selectors, it will take into consideration the, the, the workloads running or those nodes as endpoints, right? So every service or anything that's running on that node um, will be part of that label, right? Because you might have a single service or multiple services running, but it will have uh, those labels associated with it. And therefore, you can create a single policy to say, hey, you know, protect only allow traffic for, you know, application A. And if application A um, labels are used for pods and uh, actual Linux host, therefore, the same policy will be applied to both. So that's a, a you know, great value add that you can get uh, by using Calico across native host and pods. Uh, so I'll stop sharing here to see the questions. Um, Okay, so let me see the couple of questions that came up right now. Uh, is there anything on the ingress? Is there anything on the ingress part? Um, uh, so Calico policies uh, uh, can be defined uh, in the ingress or egress uh, direction uh, relative to the pod. So all the incoming traffic is ingress. So uh, and all the all the traffic leaving the pod is egress. Whether that is East-West, so coming from a different pod in the same cluster, or leaving to you know the external world, uh, it's the same thing. The policies are apply regardless of uh, the traffic pattern there. So you can create a policy in the ingress direction to protect against you know the pod next door, or you can protect against all the external traffic. I don't know if that answers your question, Luca, but uh, feel free to kind of chime in if it does not. Um, is there? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, Rahul, is there a quick link I could follow to play around with Calico on Ratchet? Absolutely. So if you go to um, um, uh, Tiger.io for slash trial, um, there you can actually go and select, um, there's two methods, I think there's a sandbox and Calico, uh, Calico um, uh, uh, there's a sandbox option. And that option allows you to say, hey, I need a, I need a, a Rancho cluster, so we'll give you a Rancho cluster that has Calico on it, and you can actually uh, have, you know, go through like three or four labs. Uh, it's free, and you have access to it for I think a couple of days. So feel free to to look into that. Uh, the criteria on choosing the extant versus IPNMP. Uh, it's a great question. So um, the as I said. There's, you know, you need to kind of look into the differences in the extant and IPNMP. Uh, there is um, differences around, um, you know, which layer is it being uh, routed to the switch ad? I think there's another question uh, from a different uh, person around this. So uh, encapsulation, right, um, is a method to take the original packet, right, that is leaving the pod or incoming to the pod and um, it encapsulate it, put it in another packet that the rest of the network can actually know how to handle it, right? So the, the, the real reason why encapsulation is needed is because um, you're creating basically pockets of networks that are independent, but the moment that you want to actually traverse those networks, um, you know, or layer through layer two domains, you need the mechanism to tell the rest of the network how to, uh, uh, how to actually, uh, what to do with this packet, what to do with this, with this uh, 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 you know, a packet leaving the pod. And, um, 
in most cases, right, you, um, you know, the, the, the IPs that are, you know, assigned to the pods uh, are not going to make much sense to, to the rest of the network. You know, think about it as your LAN, right, and your, and your home network. You know, you're the 192.168 really doesn't make anything. It's not writable outside the word. And therefore, you need some, you know, something like natting, really, some level of encapsulating so that it can actually read, um, you know, uh, go through the internet. Similarly, within Kubernetes, you need to um, mechanism to encapsulate existing traffic within, uh, you know, as pods are, are, are communicating. Um, within, you know, pod to pod doesn't really, you don't need encapsulation, as I said. But if you're traversing um, uh, layer two networks, so the pods are, you know, are residing across, if the nodes or the worker nodes are residing across layer two networks, your network does not understand this 10 dot address that it's seeing the traffic come into, therefore it will be dropping the traffic. So therefore you need to have uh, a method to encapsulate that, that, that traffic and you have two options, PXLAN or IP and IP. And, you know, going back to that original question, um, the IP and IP is basically creating a layer three, um, uh, layer three IP packet inside also a layer three IP packet. VXLAN is basically a uh, layer two protocol, uh, pretty much uh, to create a layer two network, VXLAN network. Um, so you take an IP packet, put it in a VXLAN header, um, and you traverse that, and it's basically um, a, a layer two um, network that you it's an overlay, it's a layer two overlay, IP and IP is a layer three overlay. Uh, in terms of encryption, um, where does it actually happen? At host level, I appreciate more information about encryption. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, so we use um, WireGuard. So if you look, go to docs.projectcalico.org, uh, I think, uh, and just look for WireGuard uh, encryption. Uh, so it will guide you through, you know, how it works, you know, and uh, where does it happen? But uh, to answer your question, so, um, uh, it happens at the node level, so uh, and it happens in transit. So let's say you have two pods uh, or three pods. Uh, pod one, two are residing on node one, and pod three is residing in node uh, node two. Um, if pod one talks to pod two on the same node, it will not be encrypted because really it's not leaving the node; it's all in the kernel. Uh, basically, the traffic between the two pods is going to be. Uh, routed only through the kernel uh, network space. If it's traversing nodes, uh, we have a WireGuard um, encryption that is happening at the node level. So the moment that it leaves the node, it will be encrypted. So if you take, if you sniff the traffic between those two nodes, you will see encrypted traffic, even if you're not using mutual TLS, even if you're, you know, if you're just purely using HTTP traffic, it will be encrypted, for example. So hopefully this helps in, you know, as I said, more information on encryption uh, is available in our docs. Um, do you need uh, to use Calico Cuddle for configuring Calico or Cuddle is equally good? Uh, what extra is provided by Calico Cuddle? That's a great uh, question. You do not need to use Calico Cuddle at all. Um, the, as I said, the, the true advantage of Calico Cuddle, uh, in which, as I said, we will, I believe it's right now, it is uh, added as a kubectl plugin, uh, but um, to answer your question, there's just additional um, configurations that are um, uh, that are not exposed using kubectl. For example, um, uh, looking at uh, from the things I remember, looking at like the IP pool uh, list, you know, exhaustion uh, uh, percentage, like how many IPs do you have in the cluster uh, versus how many are consumed. That's a data point that is difficult to figure out using kubectl, and it's easy to figure that one out with uh, Calico Cuddle. Uh, so it's more of a, uh, there's certain things that we could not you know, have with kubectl, but it's there in Calico Cuddle to help you with that. But in terms of normal operations to create kubectl, uh, to create policies, to, cre to, to uh, get information around the pods, um, um, to uh, define you know, uh, as I said, network policies, those can be done with kubectl. But if you review Calico Cuddle docs in, you know, if you research it in, in our doc, in, in docs page, you'll see what capabilities that it provides uh, beyond what kubectl has, but it's not required. 
Um, what performance degrades when enabling WireGuard encryption? It's a great question. Um, so don't take it from us. There's a third party um, a benchmark uh, test that has been done. And I believe uh, with this right MTU configuration, the hit, the performance hit or yeah, uh, throughput hit using WireGuard was less than 3%. I think on a 10 gig link, uh, it, it was, we're still pushing like 9,700 uh, megs. So it was less than 3%, which is actually pretty darn good, uh, uh, you know, talking about encryption uh, with the right MTU settings uh, there. So uh, if, you, if you look at, um, if you look at, um, uh, I'll put it, I'll put this in the, in the chat window, the, the link to that uh, benchmark and it might answer your question um, there. There's also an additional question about will it uh, do auto search renewal in WireGuard? Yes, uh, uh, everything, uh, you know, when you use the, the encryption that we have by default, uh, the, the search renewal will be handed by Calco itself. So you don't have to do any uh, cert uh, rotation there. Uh, let me see. Uh, yes, so is there a table view that shows side-by-side -side comparison of Calco open source and enterprise feature? Yes, the answer to that is yes. Uh, let me pull it out real quick. Um, so if you actually go, If you go to um, docs. Uh, actually, let me pull that real quick. But before I do that, one second, please. Those are great questions. So I appreciate you guys uh, uh, look, you know, uh, asking those great questions. So let's see. Um, let me see. One second. I'm pulling two things for you guys. Um, all right, so let me share my screen real quick um, and try to wrap up. Okay, so uh, first thing first, so for the comparison, if you go to um, if you go to uh, docs.projectcalco.org and you look at the left hand side, uh, there's a tab for Calc Enterprise. Uh, so there's um, uh, there's this, a table that shows what's available on Calco open source and what's available on Calc Enterprise and compares the two. Um, so feel free to kind of look into that, and um, I'll put this in chat. If I can access chat. So I'll put this in the chat. Uh, okay. And the other thing is the uh, this blog post that we launched in November. That's based on the benchmark results for Kubernetes network plugins, CNI over 10 gig networks. Uh, so this is a great resource. This is uh, not us. We put this together. This is a third party um, uh, uh, gentleman by the name of Alexis. Uh, Ducasta. So you can see with uh, various configurations, uh, different CNIs that were used uh, with um, with uh, uh, with encryption, without encryption, uh, encryption, and so forth. And it shows you some of the results. So I'm going to put that also in uh, the chat uh, as well, so you can take that um, and look at the different uh, results. 